A man is trapped in a room with thousands of buttons, and only one of them is an exit button. The rest are either holding useless junk or are extremely dangerous. A pickup truck driven by a nun rushes through the Mexican desert. The girl takes a drag from a cigarette and dances to the music on the radio. At home, her father, a wrestler nicknamed the Snail Man, is waiting for her as he prepares to enter the ring in the most important match of his career. The man's large family lives in a provincial town, and winning the championship is a chance for him to become famous and provide his family with a promising future. The girl reaches home and picks up her father. She continues to behave eccentrically, hitting her old car and swearing at the neighbor's children. White feathers fly out from under the wheels of the pickup. At the same time, in another scene, a feather falls to the floor next to a sleeping man in yellow polka-dotted pajamas. The man wakes up and realizes he is trapped in a strange white room with no windows or doors. He looks around and gropes the walls to see where he is. The man notices a small, oddly shaped bulge on one of the walls and decides to press on it. An angel and other deities then emerge from the wall. Laughing, they fill the space and merge back into the walls, leaving their genitals outside. The man sniffs the finger he touched to the bulge and screams hysterically after realizing what he had just touched. The hostage of the unusual room tries to talk to his captors, but no one answers him. Then he decides to examine the room more closely to try and find his own way out. He presses one of the bulges again, and a toothbrush appears in the room. This is how the man realizes that different buttons are responsible for the appearance of different objects. Through his experiments, the man learns that the same object will endlessly fall out of the walls if you constantly press the same button. But not all bulges turn out to be harmless. One of the buttons launches a cart at him, which hits him in the leg. And another bulge, when pressed, swaps to the angel's butt, which releases smelly fumes right into the man's face. Out of desperation, the hostage starts screaming and becomes as cranky as a child again. Meanwhile, at a Mexican school, the young son of the wrestler argues with his classmates. They scoff at the fact that the boy is going to cheer for the snail man and say that the wrestler is too weak to win the championship. The boy defends his father's honor and says that the wrestler's real strength lies within him. A few hours later, the white room is filled with various items. After pressing another button, sushi flies out of the wall. The man also asks the room for soy sauce, but nothing happens. The hostage has no choice but to start eating the sushi without the sauce. After the man finishes his unleavened meal, he presses a nearby button, and soy sauce flies out of the wall infuriating him. The next push of a button brings the man 3D glasses. He puts them on and notices an angel on the opposite wall pointing to his bulge, hinting that it should be pressed. The delighted man thinks he has finally found his way out of the room and happily clicks on his genitals. Contrary to his expectations, all the other bulges disappear once the button is pressed, and a countdown starts in the room. As time expires, an enormous butt appears from above and knocks the man out with gas. Several more hours pass and the man manages to read several volumes of manga. He asks the room for a sixth volume, but the room mocks him again and gives him the seventh, eighth, and ninth volumes when he presses the buttons. He keeps pressing different buttons but still doesn't get what he wants. A doorway opens behind him for a few seconds when the man presses another button. He notices it too late and, nervous with excitement, forgets which button opens the door. After another press, a tribal native runs in front of the man and disappears into the opposite wall. He presses another button, and a stream of water pours down on his head. At last, he finds the right button and happily runs to the open portal, but it remains open for only a few seconds, after which the button returns to its original position. The man makes several more attempts to reach the door until he realizes that the passage remains open only if the button is jammed. Then he stands on the button with his foot, after which he pushes away from it and quickly runs toward the exit. The attempt fails, and the man decides to hit the button with a flyswatter at a distance to be closer to the passageway when the portal opens. Failure again. The man continues to try all the items at hand, but the button still rises, closing the exit to the door. Then the hostage drags a massive jug up to the wretched button. He lifts it with difficulty and places it on the bulge, but the stubborn button rises again. A new ingenious idea occurs to the man. He should fill the jug with water, then it will be heavier, and press the button with more pressure. Instead of putting the jug under the stream, the man uses his body and clothing to transfer between the water and the jug's opening. The liquid obtained this way is only enough to water a bonsai. Meanwhile, the snail man finishes his last preparations before entering the ring and prays for good luck. After he finishes praying, the nun picks up her grandfather and brother to take them to his father's match. The hostage has a new plan, he fills the jug with sushi to the top. But now it is so heavy that it cannot be moved. The man reaches for the sushi with his hands, but the hole is too narrow. Then he comes up with another idea and uses chopsticks to free the container from the excess weight. The process takes so long that the flowers on the bonsai blossom. The man does not give up and is rewarded for his patience, it is light enough for him to carry it to the button. But exactly which button, 
the poor hostage forgets again. He presses a random button, and again a tribesman emerges from the wall and accidentally kicks the jug with his foot. The men stare at each other in silence. The tribesman walks back into the wall. The impact cracks the jug and shatters, driving the man in pajamas to another hysteria. The hostage starts screaming like a caveman and tries to jam the button with rice, but it doesn't work. Then he uses duct tape and a metal plaque, but the button rises repeatedly. After the last attempt to reach the passageway, he is hit in the back with a dropping panel. After unsuccessful attempts to escape, the man gets drunk on pills and falls asleep. When he wakes up, he wants to brush his teeth and presses the bulge to draw water. The poor man gets the button wrong again, and instead, there is now a rope hanging from the ceiling. The man immediately has a new plan. He opens the passageway in the wall and quickly flies over to it on the rope. Mad with happiness, he finally reaches the door inside, but it is locked. Frustrated by yet another failure, the man barely has time to run back into the room and receives another blow from a panel on his back. In a rage, he kicks one of the bulges with his foot, and a floating key appears in the middle of the room. But things are not so simple again. As the man gets closer to the key, the button unlocks, and the object disappears. Surprised, the hero again forgets which button he pressed. He starts to check the random buttons, and the silhouette of an angry dog appears out of the wall, which scares the man to death. He presses another button, and another angry dog appears. On the third try, the man finally guesses the right button. To avoid losing sight of it again, the hostage puts raw tuna on it. This is the moment to get inventive again. The man tries to swing on the rope to push the button and quickly grab the key, but he can't reach the walls. Having fallen to the floor, he notices a plunger with which he can reach the wall, press the button and grab the coveted key. A new attempt is unsuccessful, but the man does not stop and tries again. This time, he wields the plunger brilliantly, calculates the time for the task at hand, and eventually succeeds. The man reaches the door, turns the key, and nothing happens. It turns out that there is another code lock on top of the door. The unlucky man runs back to the passageway and gets a panel on his back again. In a rage, he throws the plunger at the wall and activates the button with the tribesman. As the native passes him, the man notices three numbers on his forehead and guesses that it might be the lock code. The poor man has to activate the passageway three times to have time to enter all the numbers. Finally, the mysterious door opens, and the man goes inside. Instead of long-awaited freedom, he finds himself in a tiny room. The way back is already closed. The man has no choice but to sit on the floor and cry. He scrolls through his mind fantasizing about how else he could use the big room and how many possibilities might still be hidden. Suddenly the prisoner feels a breeze from one of the walls. He pushes it away quickly and runs down an endless corridor in pitch darkness. A wrestling championship begins in Mexico. The snail man's father-in-law and son are already sitting in the audience, anticipating his entrance. The young wrestling team, the Roughnecks from the North, are the first to enter the ring and quickly knock out their opponent. After the brutal fight, the boy begins to worry about his father, but the snail man confidently enters the ring with his partner, and their team, Kiss Me Harder, greets the crowd. Before the fight even begins, the young rivals push their opponents out of the ring. The unlucky prisoner finally reaches the end of the corridor and enters a new room. He notices that his hair has grown longer and his clothes have faded. Angels reappear on the room's walls, but they are darker and look more mature this time. Taunting the hero, the deities again leave buttons behind, and the exit from the room immediately closes. Snail Man stands outside the ring, watching his rivals double-team his partner. The Roughnecks call him into the ring, but the man doesn't want to break wrestling rules. Then the men brutally knock out the Snail Man's partner, and it's his turn to get in the ring. The two opponents come at the man again, and he struggles to fend off the blows of the younger, more frisky fighters. At this moment, the prisoner gradually approaches one of the bulging buttons. The situation in the ring becomes even more dangerous, with one of the fighters planning to hit the snail man with a chair. At that moment, the prisoner in the room presses a button, and the snail man's head extends out, knocking out both opponents. Because nothing happens in the room, the prisoner continues to push the button impatiently. This leads to the snail man also knocking out his partner, the referee, and even his young son, who believed in his victory the most. The man continues to explore other buttons. After another push, at a rock concert in Los Angeles, the lead singer breathes flames of fire into the crowd of fans. One more button and a magic show in Russia pull off a magic trick with the disappearance of a woman. After another push, a man in China barks at his dogs. With no result, the captive notices an angel flying somewhere far above, striving higher and higher towards a bright circle of light. The man decides to climb up the bulge in the wall as well. Each step triggers certain events in the world. Flowers open, animals appear and die, someone wins, someone fails, accidents happen, houses collapse, amazing discoveries happen, and a rocket is launched into space. As he rises higher and higher, the hero also changes. His hair and beard grow, 
and his clothes become white. He no longer climbs up but begins to fly. World events are getting bigger, natural disasters, wars, environmental disasters, fires, and protests. Flying among white feathers, the man starts waving his arms frantically and suddenly freezes. His body continued to be carried toward the light, surrounded by soaring feathers. The light carries him into a circular, dark room. The captive's gaze, as well as his appearance, has become more serious and focused. Behind him, the silhouettes of the six continents of the earth protrude from the wall. In front of him, the man sees a giant general button, which should lead to even greater events. He has a choice to make, stop now or press the button.